Okay, so we've talked about Dalton's atomic theory that deals with atoms and trying to describe matter by atoms. Now, if we look at a normal size object, like this pen, but wanted to talk about the number of atoms inside of this object, it's gonna be huge. So rather than trying to account for the actual number of particles of something, we're going to identify the number of moles. That makes it more of a large scale measurement huge numbers into much more manageable numbers. And so this uses what we call Avogadro's number. So a mole is simply defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of whatever we're trying to talk about, okay? So for example, if I were to say, I have a mole of aluminum, that means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. Or if I'm talking about a compound, I could say I have one mole of aluminum oxide. Okay, well that means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of Al2O3, our aluminum oxide. So if we're trying to take a, a large scale measurement, something that would be a huge number, like 10 to the 23rd, a giant number of atoms, and we think, well, why do we treat it with regards to a mole? Okay, well, we're gonna do this by looking at, well, what are the ways that we define a mole and what are the units that we use to relate them? Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about is what we call molar mass. Okay, so molar mass is basically saying one mole of whatever, aluminum, aluminum oxide, carbon dioxide, equals some number of grams of whatever that would be. So I'm just gonna call this X. Some number of grams of X, that's the molar mass. Now when we're talking about ionic compounds or ions or elements or uh, covalent compounds, we're gonna see that we can kind of break it down into smaller pieces or smaller ways of talking about it. So broadly, we could say molar mass for any kind of substance. Well, if we want to talk about, for example, an element, I'm going to talk about the atomic mass. So I'll say the atomic mass. So for example, I would say one mole of aluminum is the atomic mass of aluminum. We think, well, where are we going to get this from? 26.982 grams. Okay, well, if I go to the periodic table, we see we've talked about uh, the atomic masses in AMU. And we're going to see one atom of aluminum is 26.982 AMU of aluminum. Well, if I scale that up to a mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum, I'm going to have 26.982 grams of aluminum. And so we see it's basically a one-to-one -one relationship in just talking about atoms to AMU versus moles to grams. And so we can see I got this from the periodic table, the value of aluminum on the periodic table. So this is just an element by itself, like copper or aluminum or iron or magnesium. But if we talk about a molecular compound, we can think, well, I'm not going to talk about the atomic mass of a molecule, what I'm going to talk about is a molecular mass. And so if we're talking about a molecule, for example, one mole of carbon dioxide is going to equal, well now I would think, well it's not just carbon, it's not just oxygen by itself, it's the sum of all of those. So I would add up one carbon and two oxygens, and I would get 44.009 grams of carbon dioxide. So that's the molecular mass of carbon dioxide. I would not talk about the atomic mass of carbon dioxide because it's a molecule, it's not a single atom. In addition to that, we don't think about molecules existing for ionic compounds. When we describe ionic compounds, we don't describe them by the molecules, but we describe them by formula units. And so for our ionic compounds, we're gonna talk about a formula mass. Okay, so this is the mass for one mole of that substance. So if we look at our ionic compound here, aluminum oxide, one mole of aluminum oxide would be equivalent to 101.961 grams 
of our aluminum oxide. Right, and so we see this is kind of helping us define what does it mean for us to say molecular mass or molar mass or element and atomic mass or formula mass. It all depends on what we're talking about. We can more broadly talk about the molar mass of an element, a molecule, or an a compound and just say that's a molar mass. But if we say molecular mass, it's the mass for one molecule. If I say formula mass, that would be the mass for one formula unit of that, right? Formula unit, lowest whole number ratio of the ions within an ionic compound. Okay, so this helps us kind of see the relationship between molar mass and uh, the number of pieces. Okay, so in the video to follow, we're gonna look at how do we apply moles and molar mass? How do we look at the fact that I know one mole of aluminum is 26.982 grams. What does that tell me? Well, that tells me that I can weigh out some amount of aluminum, and from there, I'm gonna be able to go and identify, well, how many moles do I actually have based upon the mass and molar mass of that specific substance?